Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use my new pattern effects layout for TouchOSC, which is a controller for Tractor Pro 4. And this will control the effects units and the new pattern player feature of Tractor Pro 4. For the purposes of this video, I'm using the TouchOSC app on my computer, which is linked directly to Tractor. But obviously this is meant to be used uh, on a tablet device and this will appear exactly the same on a tablet device. I'm just doing this because it's kind of easier to make the video this way rather than streaming from my iPad. So the reason I made this device was that when you have four effects units selected in Tractor, you only get a very limited amount of what you can actually see there of the pattern player. Just to demonstrate this, if we go to uh, Preferences, and then effects and we select two effects units you'll see that you've got full control here over all of the parameters in the pattern player however move to four effects units and you've only got a very limited amount so i wanted to make something that would give you full control over all four pattern players should you wish to use them so these four areas represent the four effects units in tractor Notice here that this one is set to an effect, which is a group effect here, whereas the other three are set to the pattern player. And you can switch between these quite easily. Notice as well that the color of the routing button here changes depending on what kind of unit you've got selected. So for unit one, You'll notice index A, B, C and D, when we change that to an effect, it changes colour to orange. And if it's the pattern player, it changes colour to green. I'll go into what you can do with the routings uh, a little later on. But for now, let's look first at the pattern player. So we'll have the pattern player selected. This is for FX unit 1, which is this one here in Tractor. And we're having this routed through deck A. Controls are pretty simple. You can use these buttons here to change the kit. There are various inbuilt kits that you can choose from. Um, we'll leave it at the 909 kit. And the play button will obviously play and stop the pattern player. Here I've got a kick selected, but you can use this sample buttons left and right to switch between different samples that are present in the kit. The pattern slider will select from one of the several inbuilt patterns that you get with each kit. And these are typical patterns that we would use for the kind of instrument that you're playing. So here we've got a kick playing a, a standard sort of four to the floor thing. If you're selecting, say, a snare, it's going to select patterns that are more suited to a snare. We'll leave this at the four to the floor. This will change the pitch of the sample that you've got selected. And this will change the amount of decay. So that's the full length of the sample, or we can shorten it. But let's leave that nice and long. Next is the volume. That's pretty straightforward. So here we've got the duck button. This works like a kind of side chain. Um, so if you've got something playing on the main deck here, and we've got the kick playing. If you select duck, it's just gonna duck the sound of whatever's playing in your deck slightly whenever there's a note playing here. Quite subtle. but that does make a bit of a difference. At any point you can add or remove notes. And you'll notice when I do that, that this little red line appears here next to the R. R stands for reset. Um, so if we were to press that, it's just gonna reset it back to what it was before you made any changes here yourself. And the final two buttons here are save and load. So any changes that you've made here to the pattern that you've selected, the pitch of the sample, the decay, whether the device is playing or not, the sample itself, 
and the duck setting. You can save all of these so that if you switch away to a different kit and come back, all of these settings will remain the same. So let's save that. And if we move away and come back again, everything's as it was. The one thing it doesn't do, which confused me a bit at first, is if you make any changes here, so you add, say, another few notes in here and there, and then we save it, and we come back to it, you'll notice that these notes are missing. So although save will save all of these settings here, it won't save any user-created patterns. These you've kind of got to do yourself each time. I thought at first I was missing something or doing something wrong, but it does seem to be the way that this is meant to be used in Tractor. So controls are the same for each effect unit. And you can basically, I mean, you can have up to four different patterns all playing all at once. As I said before, you've also got control over effects. So we can switch between group effects and single effects. Controls here are pretty straightforward. So you can turn the device on or uh, you can turn the effect on or off with these buttons here. This controls the amount of the effect that you want to use. Um, this is the dry wet amount. Um, H and T stand for hold and toggle, and this determines the behavior of the buttons. So with hold selected, to turn the effect on, you've got to hold it down. If you let go, it's going to turn the effect off. With toggle, you just need to press it once, and it's selected. Press it again, and it'll turn off. And much like the save and load buttons here, you can save and load any settings that you have. And this is basically just the effect amounts that will be stored. And finally, we can use these two buttons here in conjunction with the FX buttons to switch between the different types of effects that you've got in Tractor. The one thing that you can't do, as far as I'm aware in the TouchOSC app, is hold two buttons down at once. Um, and this is required to be able to do this. So to change the effect that you have, the type of effect, if you hold either right or left, and then I'm going to do this on the iPad, um, pressing FX1 button will cycle through the effects. If you press left, it'll cycle backwards through the effects. Uh, what do we have it on? We had it on flanger flux. Okay. So that's the group effects and single effects is pretty much identical really. The only difference being here that param 2 and param 3 will turn on the parameter buttons here, which change depending on the effect that you're using. And again, you can use these left and right buttons in conjunction with FX on here to change the effect type. And as you can see here, it's got my parameters that I'd had saved from earlier. And that's about it. So just to kind of demo what you can do with it, and what we'll do, we'll have Pattern Player in Effects Unit 1 and Pattern Player in Effects Unit 3 both going through Deck A. And we'll have Pattern Player 2 and Effects Unit 4 routed through Deck B. I've got a kick and a snare on one and three, and I've got like some percussion running through an effects unit separately into deck B. So we want to change that to a snare, or a clap, and let's shorten that decay a little. And we have some percussion here in uh, effect unit two. That's actually a snare. Let's change that to something percussive. So 
I've got this one here routed through this effect unit here. And I want this on group effect. And I want to change this from delay to something else. Flanger Pulse. So you'll notice that this effect is only making any changes to the pattern player that's rooted through the same deck, in this case deck B. with some different sounds, see what this sounds like. And there we go. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please feel free to let me know in the comments section below. You can download the uh, the mapping for Tractor and the layout for Touch OSC from my website, and the link for that is in the description. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.